Leeds United, three times English champions, Champions League semi-finalists as recently as 2001 and back in the Premier League for the first time in 16 years under the leadership of the mercurial Argentine Marcelo Bielsa. But just who is this man and how will Leeds do now that they're back in the big time? Don't forget before you get started to smash a like on the video, share the content around, subscribe to the channel if you're new and subscribe on our socials. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and TikTok. Marcelo Bielsa was born in to a middle-class family in Rosario, Argentina, a city home to the infamous Newell's Old Boys, a club that has produced players such as Lionel Messi. Now, although Bielsa was extremely passionate about football from a very young age, he had an indistinguishable playing career. It's no doubt that he was better with the ball in his brain than he was with the ball at his feet. And he retired from football at the age of 25 in 1980. Now, after this, he immediately got a job as youth team coach with Newell's Old Boys, a position which he held for 10 years until he was made first team manager in 1990. Bielsa was successful with Newell's Old Boys, winning the Primera División in both 1991 and 1992 before departing for a spell in Mexico. Upon his return to Argentina in 1998, he was made manager of the Argentina national team, uh, where his fortunes were mixed. Argentina crashed out of the 2002 World Cup at the group stages, finishing with just four points after having been drawn in the group of death along with England, Sweden and Nigeria. In the 2004 Copa America, his fortunes were better. Argentina finished runners up and they won the 2004 Olympic Games with a team that fielded players such as Carlos Heves. After that, Bielsa became manager of the Chilean national team between 2007 and 2011, where he brought them back to the World Cup for the first time since France 98 in South Africa 2010, and they finished in the round of 16. They were knocked out by Brazil 3-0 uh, after having impressed in the, in the group stages. Following on from that, he managed Athletic Bilbao, where he brought them to the Europa League final and the the uh, Copa del Rey final in 2012 and after that he had uh, less success in France with Marseille and Lille. Bielsa was appointed first uh, team head coach of Leeds United in the summer of 2018 and while he started extremely promisingly and had Leeds top at Christmas, their form tailed off in the second half of the season and they finished in third place losing to Derby County. 4-3 uh, in the playoffs, uh, Derby had finished in sixth place. Now, during this time, Bielsa had a few highly controversial incidents, uh, most notably in January 2019, in preparation for a game against Frank Lampard's Derby County, when a member of the Leeds United uh, coaching uh, staff was spotted spying at the Derby County training ground. This caused outrage in the fairly conservative English football media with many um, many pundits and coaches heavily critical of Bielsa's methods. Others, such as Tottenham Hotspur manager Mauricio Pochettino, who had played under Bielsa for Argentina, were supportive uh, of his methods and said it was nothing and something that was quite commonplace in their native Argentina. Bielsa for this was fined uh, £200,000. The fine was, was made out to Leeds, but Bielsa actually paid the entire fine out of his own back pocket. In response to this incident, Bielsa called a press conference in which he gave a detailed PowerPoint presentation to the media present, uh, explaining his methods behind this, how the information that he had gathered from the incident was used, and giving, giving a really, really thorough analysis of his meticulous preparation and many in the media room who were present that day were lauding him, calling him a genius for this presentation. This is not the first time that Bielsa has been lavished with such praise. Indeed, coaches with the stature of the likes of Pep Guardiola have also said how influential Bielsa has been on their coaching careers. Bielsa when he first became manager of Argentina, the standard formation used was a flat back four, and he gave everyone a sheet of paper and told them to write down back three or back four. Everyone wrote down back four, and Bielsa stood up and said, no, we will be playing with a back three. And he implemented 
a very unusual formation which has become very influential which is a 3-3-3-1 where you have three defenders three in a line ahead of that i guess you could say one dm two win backs then three attacking midfielders behind a striker and if you think about it that's quite similar to how a lot of pep guardiola's teams have set up yes he plays a 4-3-3 but his central midfielder the, the, the yeah. deepest the deep line playmaker drops so deep if you think of fernandinho that he also became he almost becomes a third center back and the full backs push up very high and play as wing backs and then the two central midfielders ahead of fernandinho uh, most recently david silva and kevin de bruyne you would have silva playing a bit deeper and de bruyne playing further ahead it kind of in line with the likes of Raheem Sterling and Riyad Mahrez. So although Guardiola definitely plays a 4-3-3, Bielsa's 3-3-3-1 uh, can be seen to influence Guardiola among a host of other managers. Even Mikel Arteta, uh, obviously a uh, disciple of Guardiola himself, uh, the way that he sets up Arsenal in a 3-4-3, um, it can often resemble a a 3-3-3-1. It's a very unique formation. Uh, although uh, on the on the face of things, it sounds crazy, a 3-3-3-1. But when you really think about it and analyze it and, and look at how many of the teams like to play, creating triangles for, for passing lanes, that formation is the basis for many managers in, in, in present day football. Towards the end of the 2018-19 season, um, Leeds United were neck and neck with Aston Villa for a position in the in the in the playoff places and in this game Leeds scored a very controversial goal Aston Villa's Jonathan Kojia had gone down injured and Leeds went ahead and scored a goal and were the crowd in Villa Park were incensed by this incident indeed so was Bielsa and he instructed his players to allow Aston Villa to score a free goal and they literally stood back Bielsa was shouting give the goal give the goal give the goal and Aston Villa walked the ball up to the to the to the Leeds box, and despite Pontus Janssen's best efforts, he was the only Leeds player who uh, who believed that they should not be doing this. Um, Aston Villa scored a free goal. Uh, the score finished one one, and as a result, Leeds were denied uh, an automatic uh, promotion place, and they had to settle for a place in the playoffs. And of course, as I've already mentioned, they then lost to Derby County. In his second season in charge, they stormed to the league title, finishing 10 points clear of second place West Brom with, I believe, 93 points. And over the course of these two years, they have become one of the most exciting, one of the most identifiable and one of the most progressive sides in the entirety of the English game. I'm of the opinion that they will be an incredible addition to the Premier League. And I'm excited by some of, some of the signings that um, Bielsa has already made, most particularly Rodrigo, who started last yeah, night um, against uh, Germany for, for Spain. He's a Spanish international. They've got him from Valencia for, I believe, £30 million. And he's a forward who works incredibly hard. He can play off the left, he can play off the right, he can play through the middle. And what Bielsa likes his forwards to be able to do is, certainly in terms of the centre forward, is to drop deep, bring others into play and to work, work, work. It's what Patrick Bamford was doing in the championship for two years. He was criticized for not being clinical enough in front of goal. However, I think Rodrigo will be a key addition. He will take pressure off Bamford and at the same time, he'll, he'll um, really do what, what Bielsa wants, wants him to. And he'll add, he'll add uh, significantly more quality up front than Patrick Bamford. In addition to a hard working, versatile central striker, Two other key players stand out uh, for me in, in Bielsa's Leeds uh, team. Now, he plays a 4-1-4-1, and the man in possession of the yeah. number six shirt, I guess you could call it, although he doesn't wear number six, the, the, the defensive midfielder, the deep-lying playmaker, is Calvin Phillips, a former box-to-box -box midfielder. He was scoring kind of seven, eight, nine, ten goals a season for Leeds before Bielsa arrived and converted him into a deep-lying playmaker. And if, as I was talking about his 3-3-3-1, Phillips plays so deep sometimes that he almost becomes that central centre-back, the third centre-back, playing as a, as, a, as a sweeper almost. He really comes very deep and he picks up the ball and he dictates the play from deep. Then another key player is Pablo Hernandez, former Swansea City man who plays in the number 10 position and contributes significantly with goals and assists. And although he is 35 years of age, you'd still expect him to be able to readapt to the Premier League relatively quickly and to provide Leeds with some much needed quality in the final third. I expect Bielsa's Leeds to bring a freshness to the Premier League in the same fashion as Nuno Espirito Santos' Wolves did when they were promoted two years ago. Both sides, although 
set up differently and managed by two very different head coaches have a clear philosophy. They've gelled over time. And if you think of the likes of Norwich, who had a, uh, a progressive philosophy, I believe Farca had only been in charge for a year before they, they achieved promotion and the players hadn't been uh, playing with each other for, for so long. This Leeds team has been together under Bielsa for two years and many of the players have been at Leeds for much longer than that. He's kept the quality spine that they have had playing in the championship together and he's just adding little bits of extra quality to that and I believe that they have the class and the the identity to really make a mark in next season's Premier League surprise a few teams and finish comfortably either a mid-table or towards the Europa League places. Bielsa himself will also be a great addition to the Premier League. He's a really unique character. In order to prove himself, in order to gain his work permit for the United Kingdom, he had to prove himself to be exceptionally talented. And to do this, he compiled a dossier of every formation used in every single championship game in the 2017-18 season. And this obviously showed uh, the, the powers that be that this man is a, is, a, is a football mastermind and he really, really, really has such a meticulous approach that, that he is, uh, I suppose, a footballing, footballing genius and worthy of a, of a UK work permit. In addition, he is so passionate about the game that he had a bedroom installed in the Leeds training ground so that he can better analyze, spend more time at the ground and do a more thorough job in terms of preparing his squad for the task at hand. And lastly, he made his squad at Leeds pick up litter around the training ground for three hours. And this is because it takes the average Leeds fan three hours of work to be able to afford to pay for a match day ticket. Now, thank you very much for watching this video today. It was fascinating for me to do this research into Marcelo Bielsa. I really expect Leeds to be a breath of fresh air in the Premier League and for Bielsa himself to add a lot. It would be great if he was able to have, he's quite a, a, a personality himself, and it would be great if he was able to have a kind of rivalry, you know, uh, with the likes of Jose Mourinho and other um, controversial figures in the Premier League. So thanks very much for watching today, guys. Don't forget again to smash a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, share the content around and subscribe to our socials. Once again, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. I've been Joe and I'll see you next time.